Hello and welcome to today's video where I'll be covering my webcomic process in Clip Studio Paint. In today's video, I'd like to discuss a few custom assets I recommend every comic artist prepare for themselves before starting a new webcomic project. Links to additional tutorials, as well as everything mentioned in today's video, will be down in the description below. It's no secret that making a webcomic is a massive undertaking. You've got to decide on the art style, what brushes and tools to use, what size and format it'll be in, etc. all before you even draw the first page. It can be tempting to just jump into the process without any planning, which is exactly what I did when I started my very first project. But after years of working on multiple comics, I've realized that a little preparation up front when starting a new project makes a huge difference in saving myself time and effort. So today, I'd like to recommend a few preparations and assets you can make for yourself before getting started on a webcomic. Before you decide on anything else, it's important to consider the size of your canvas and what format you intend to work in. Is there a specific platform or site you want to host your comic on? And do they have recommended dimensions to work at? Do you intend to eventually have your work printed? Can your device handle large file sizes, or would it be better to work smaller? As a general rule of thumb, I try to work at least two times or three times the recommended size for whatever hosting platform I intend to share my comic on. It's good practice to work larger than you think you need, since you can always shrink an image without much quality loss, but stretching an image to make it larger almost guarantees a drop in quality. If you intend to have your webcomic printed at any point in the future, including some bleed marks along the border can help you visualize where to place the most important elements in your panels so they aren't trimmed off later. Once you've determined the size and format you want to use for your comic, we can create a preset in Clip Studio Paint by going to File New. Select a preset from the top row that best suits your intended format. Here you can input your ideal dimensions and any print marks. Once you've gotten everything how you like it, click the button next to the drop down to create a preset. Give it a memorable name and be sure to select the settings you want the preset to include, then click OK. Now creating a new page is as simple as going to File New and picking your preset from the drop down. When sketching out the panels for your comic, it's important that the sketches are legible enough to draw line art over later, but rough enough that you don't spend too much time on them compared to the later steps of the process. And one thing you'll find yourself drawing again and again a million times over, at least in a character-driven story, are heads and faces. By utilizing assets to quickly add in head angles, you can make the process of sketching much faster. There are two approaches I like to use depending on which comic project I'm working on. For my more stylized projects, I like to draw out a character's head at multiple angles that I'll be using most frequently. You can do this for each individual character, or for a more simplistic art style, you can make one general base head to draw over for all the characters. With my heads drawn, now I can turn them into usable assets. For Darley and the Magician's Key, I opted to turn my head sketches into brushes so I could quickly stamp them onto the canvas while sketching. Alternatively, you could register them as image materials and add them to your materials library to drag and drop in whenever needed. If you're working in a more realistic art style, you may find it more useful to use a 3D model as your head reference. Making one yourself may be the best way to capture your art style appropriately, but if you're like me and have no skills in 3D modeling whatsoever, the Clip Studio Assets page has a large selection of user-made head models available for download to your materials library. All you have to do is drag and drop the model onto your canvas and position it how you like, then use it as a reference or base for your sketches. Those are a few of my suggestions for how you can set yourself up for success using custom assets when making a webcomic in Clip Studio Paint. In the next video, I'll go over a few more of my recommendations, so be sure to check back to learn more. Check the description below for my social media links and more tutorials. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.